Good afternoon, everyone. It's 1.31, and uh, we shall now start our program. Let us seek the guidance of our Lord. Let us begin with a prayer, and we request our dear colleague, Professor Euphemio Kalang, to lead us in a prayer. Uh, let us pray. Our divine and holy Father in heaven, we glorify and worship your most holy name. Thank you for all the blessings and for all the good things that you bestowed upon us. We thank you, Father, for the life and strength that we still have. Dear Father, in your heavenly abode, we are begging for your mercy. Please provide us your divine protection. Protection from the curse of this world so that we can continue our services to our students. And most of all, we can continue in giving praises to your most holy name. Today, as we discuss matters and issues related to our task, please bless us with the knowledge and wisdom that we need so that we can, per we can properly perform our duties for the good of our students, for the good of our college, and for the good of our university, all for the greater glory of your most holy name. Please forgive all the sins and all our shortcomings. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you po, Sir Kalang. Yeah. To our students presently deployed in various schools, to our students who will undergo teaching internship next semester, our supervisors, CLSU faculty and members of DepEd who are here present, attendees to this lecture, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. The Department of Secondary Education of the College of Education is committed to building the capacity of both students and faculty through mentoring program in various areas. The first mentoring program was in July, and today we are having our second mentoring on two important lectures, how to write an action research and how to write a narrative report. This is in order to capacitate our students as they write or prepare the requirements for teaching internship. Aside from just a requirement, our aim is to open opportunity for teachers and students as partners in, con in the conduct and uh, in crafting and action research. So another capacity building, the mentoring part three is being planned. Well, this may be a bit ambitious, but it aims to capacitate students in, act, in writing action research for publication. Hence, the topic in the next uh, mentoring program shall be how to publish your action research. You and your, the student teachers uh, and, their, and their cooperating teachers together with the supervisors may consider submitting. There is the, the action research that will be written this semester for publication in the future. So our webinar this afternoon is a joint effort of students through our uh, very cooperative student in the person of Mr. Joseph Pablo. And of course, the advisor of uh, CD, CED Council, Mr. Aaron Jan Castro. The lecturers for this afternoon, and of course, uh, the faculty members of the department. We extend our gratitude to each and every one of you. And of course, our attendees this afternoon, thank you for attending and for being here present in our webinar. Actually, our moderator for this afternoon, our MC is uh, one of our faculty members. Pero meron po siyang, he has an emergency, so... Uh, we are no longer bothering our colleagues who are, of course, we know everyone is busy, kaya ako na rin po ang mag-MC. No? So we start our 
our lecturer. Our first lecturer is a graduate, is a PhD in curriculum and instruction, and he took his PhD degree from Philippine Normal University. He also gives uh, lectures to various institutions. And uh, this afternoon, he is going to share his expertise to us. The topic is how to write uh, the basics of action research. So without much further ado, let's call in our colleague from the department, Dr. Virjun Dilia. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, to our department chair, Dr. Emily Estrero to the Dean of the College of Education, to my fellow supervisors, uh, to my, my co-lecturer this afternoon, to the faculty and staff at the College of Education, and uh, to guests who, are, who joined uh, this afternoon's lecture, and to you, dear student, dear, uh, practice teachers or interns. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the department for uh, considering me to deliver a lecture on how to write an action research this afternoon. Uh, and because of that, uh, I'll, be, I'll be delivering a lecture, but this will not be a technical one since I would like this lecture to be interactive one. So the focus is on how to write an action research. But before that, let me go over with uh, some uh, definitions of uh, the, the terminologies. And uh, after that, we will try to uh, have your action research or your title be corrected or your if you have there your written one, then probably we could uh, uh, correct them or make some revisions such that your work will be a good one. Okay. Uh, Mam Rev, can I share a screen? Yes, po, sir. Mam Rev. Yes, po, sir. Naka open na po, sir. Disabled. Okay, na. Can you see my? Can you see my Wala presentation pa, now? Wala pa, sir. Mam Rev. Hello, po, sir. Sir, pa try po ulit. Oh wait. Wait. Ayan. Wait. Okay. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Um, first of all, let's try to ask ourselves, why do we need to uh, Recording write in an progress. action research? So we are teachers, and because we are teachers, we are bound, duty bound to do our task to always make our teaching better. And one way to do that is for us to observe our uh, practices inside the classroom. And if ever we could see something uh, that may not uh, conform with uh, what we are doing as teacher, then probably we need to have or we need to investigate. And after investigation and found out there's something wrong with that, then we, uh, we need to do an action. But doing an action is not a good one if we will not do it correctly because we are teachers we need to do uh we, we need to think of solutions 
that may probably be based on scientific investigation. And one of the things that we can do is to do an action research. Okay, let us first define what an action research is. All right. Uh, there are definitions as to the action research such as it is a constructive inquiry, which uh, the researcher constructs his or her knowledge on specific issues through planning, acting, evaluating, refining, and learning from the experience. It is a continuous learning process in which the researcher or we teachers learn and also shares the new newly generated knowledge with those who may benefit from it or to our fellow teachers. That is from Koshi in 2010. Uh, to Beshi in 1998, uh, he defines action research as an inquiry which is carried out in order to understand, to evaluate, and then to change in order to improve educational practice. So the educational practice that we are referring to there is our teaching. Or in 1994, Cohen and Minion uh, define action research as an on-the-spot procedure designed to deal with a concrete problem located in a immediate situation. So the concrete problems or problem is uh, the one we, we observe in our classroom. Uh, other definitions is that an action research provide a framework that guides the energies of teachers towards a better understanding of why, when, and how students become better learning. So if we'll try to look at the definition, there is common denominator to that. And that is for us to be a better teacher, for, to, ha to have a better output or better product. And the product that we're referring to there is the learner. Uh, there are two theories associated with action research, ontology and epistemology. So on the ontology part or the theory of being, this is concerned with the claims of assumptions we make about ourselves within our social reality. What we do, what do we think exists, what does it look like, what entities are involved, and how do these entities interact with each other? That's according to Deiki in 2007. So as teacher researcher, we develop meaningful construction based on our experiences in the classroom and through communication. Teachers as action researcher also will be examining the socially constructed reality of schools. So as teachers, we are not only there to teach, but we need to observe what's happening inside the classroom such that uh, if ever we could see something wrong, as I've said a while ago, then we could uh, do concrete actions based on scientific investigation. Epistemologically, on the other hand, or it is the theory of knowledge, signifies a philosophical view of what counts as knowledge. It justifies what is possible to know, to be known, and what criteria distinguishes knowledge from beliefs. Researchers consider knowledge to be certain and discovered through scientific processes. Action researchers collect data that is more subjective and examines personal experience, insights, and beliefs. So identified several common epistemologies in the articles are uh, qualitative in nature, such as objectivism, subjectivism, constructionism, contextualization, social epistemology, feminist epistemology, idealism, naturalized epistemology, externationalism, revitalism, skepticism, and pluralism. That is according to Toro, Lundberg, et al. in 2009. So what about the phases of action research? This is actually taken from uh, the Google. However, uh, 
if we will try to simplify this, then we could have something like this one. Okay. Uh, the question is, where do we need to start from our action research? Um, in September, I think, there are, after the the after your your deployment, there are there are student teachers or interns who sent messages to me asking me to correct their their title because I told them that I am I am now accepting. I was then accepting uh, titles if ever there there are students who have their own titles such that I could correct them. And after correcting, they could start already. But the question is, well, where do we really need to get the problem? And how can we uh, do the, how can we write the title? Of course, there should be needs assessment first or observation. Sabi ng estudyante, sir, uh, hindi ba pa pwede itong sinulat ko since I have already written something that may probably help me in doing my action research. So my answer is that, ah, yeah, your, your title is also correct. However, you need to really uh, engage in teaching such that you could observe um, the real score in inside the classroom. Or in our case, since we are now in the new normal, uh, you really need to determine what's the problem uh, that you could encounter inside the classroom or in the in the asynchronous class in the synchronous class such that you could uh, determine what's the problem inside the inside the classroom or inside that uh, the zoom uh, class so you need you need to start uh, using an observation or a needs assessment Teka. Bakit kailangan may needs assessment? Of course, uh, you cannot really just uh, assume that there's problem about, for example, if your your subject is math, then uh, you will just assume that students perhaps have difficulty in answering uh, a, a particular problem. And because you assume that there's problem with that, then uh, you will go and write something about uh, the distributivity property of addition, for example, or multiplication. A, you found out that 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 students do not have problem with that. It's because you you assume that there's problem with this, the distributive property of addition. Then you write something about a title of that, and then uh, presto, sabi mo, uh, I have now my title, and I can probably let my uh, supervisor check this. Uh, hindi pa pwedeng ganun. Ang kailangan natin ay you need to observe and at least have validate uh, you need to validate that observation and uh, determine whether your observation is not purely assumption. So, i-validate mo. Pa, paano mo i-validate? Eh, sirs, Ano nga tayo pinagbabawal ng CLSU ang ano eh ang synchronous class ang face to face eh nandito lang kami sa Zoom class. Pa, paano namin i-validate na sa Google Class lang kami, Gmeet kami. Now there are several ways on how to validate a particular problem uh, in the Zoom. Uh, for example, uh, you gave a quiz and then you found out uh, let's take math ha? you found out that there are more than 20 students who failed to get the correct answer in a particular problem. That is after your ex thorough explanation and more examples that you have posted in the Google Classroom. And yet, more than 20 of your students failed to get the correct answer in your uh, exercises or in your quiz or in the term examination. And then that's probably uh, an indication that there's problem as to the topic that you have delivered and because of the results of the examination, 
and the quizzes or exercises you have given to them. So, one, pwede na. Next, eh sabi mo, ah, may problema yata sila. So, magbigay uli ako. Um, the problem is, you are, you are tasked to deliver another lecture, but in your, at the back of your mind, you have this problem regarding uh, the 20 students who failed to get the correct answer in one of the tasks that you have given. Question, kailangan mo bang balikan yun? Eh, 40 ang estudyante mo, more than 20 yung hindi nakakuha. Kailangan mo bang balikan? Abay, baka dapat balikan kasi half, more than half of the, the class failed to get the correct answer in the examination, in the exercises, in the quiz. So, anong gagawin mo? Make some verifications also. So, you need to have a needs assessment. Eh, hindi ko pwedeng pumunta ka dun sa isang lecture. Baka karugtong yan nung dating lecture. Therefore, kailangan magkaroon ka ng solution dun. So, that's an indication that you can write something about that. Teka muna. Baka naman... Ang problema ng yan ay masosolve lang sa pamamagitan ng mas maikling panahon na pagbibigay ng solution at hindi na kailangang isulat. Kasi there are topics uh, inside the class or there are problems in the, inside the class that you really need not to, to write uh, something or to make, it, to, to make it as an action research. Baka naman pwedeng isolve lang yan ng ilang example. Excuse me po, may, meron lang pong technical difficulties. Baka po nagkaroon po ng connection. Problem si Sir David. Paantabay po tayo.
Tapos turnin po, Ma'am Ma'am Emily. Yes, Ma'am Reb. <clears throat> Nagkaroon lang po ng power interruption po kay Lazar Dilia po na walang po sila ng internet connection po. Pwede daw pong mag-proceed muna kay Sir Dilia, kay Sir Torres po. Sige, uh, check ko si si Dr. Torres kung ready na siya. Sige po. Okay. Huwag po muna kayong aalis po, antabay lang po tayo. Meron lang pong power interruption sa different barangay sa Munoz. And mamaya po yatang 4 o'clock ay sasama si naman po. Huwag po muna tayong aalis. Stay tuned po. Thank you po. Hello. Sige, para siguro while waiting for Dr. Delia and Dr. Torres, uh, meron na ba sa atin mga, mga anak na kagawa ng title or uh, may idea na ba kayo ng inyong uh, gagawing action research? O yung gustong magsalita, please uh, raise your hand using the uh, raise hand button. Habang naghihintay po tayo sa ating mga speakers, uh, magpapalaro po muna ako na usong-uso ngayon sa yung mga nanonood sa Itbulaga. Bring me online. Online naman tayo. Uh, lahat sana ay mag-participate. Ang unang mananalo ay magkakamit ng 100 na load. So mag-participate po sana tayong lahat. Lalong-lalo na dun sa mga advisory ko, uh, please mag-participate po tayo. So, maghahanap ako ng tatlo kung sino yung mananalo, sila yung, o sino yung makakaunang magdadala ng isang bagay na ipapadala ko, ay siya ang mananalo ng 100 na load. So, unahan kayong magpuso kung sino yung unang mag-heart reaction siya ang tatawagin ko para sa Bring Me Online edition. Game na. Mag-heart button na po tayo, guys. Si Ken. Ken. Si Ken ang unang pa-participate. Ken, kindly open your camera. Para makita ka naman namin. Ken? Saan na si Ken? Nawala si Ken. Ken, pa-open po ako nung camera para makita natin kung makukuha mo ba ang akin. Kapakuha. Sir Ken, pa-open naman po nung camera. Ayaw yata ni Sir Ken. Ah. Uh, 
bibilangan natin si Sir Ken. After five, wala pa rin po. Heart button po ulit tayo. One. Two. Ayun, nag-open na si Sir Ken. Pa-open din, Sir, nung mic. So, bring me. Bring me three pieces na bagay o pagkain na nagsisimula sa letter T as in teacher T letter T sir Ken tasa po tasa tasa kawan dalawa na lang sir Ken ah 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 wait takbo ka din sir takbo ka din yan pag teacher daw energetic yan eh Wala na si Sir Ken. Dalawa na lang, Sir Ken. Letter T. Tabo. Hello? Tabo. Hello, tabo ba? Meron dyang tabo. Tatlo po ba? Oo, tatlo. Tatlo. Tinidor po, tsaka ting-ting. <laughs> ting-ting. Oh, sige, pwede na. So, nanalo si Sir Ken ng 100 na load. Yay! Isang ang magandang Hindi pangangailangan. <laughs> Thank you Hello. po sa pag-participate. Welcome po. Sige, sir, pa, send na lang po sa akin mamaya yung Gcash number para, or yung number nyo po, papadala na lang po namin yung load. Anong name po, ma'am? Nakalimutan uh, <laughs> na yung sobrang... Ay, si Ma'am Rebelin. Sige po, Ma'am. Sige. Thank, Thank you, po. Sir Meron pa kaya. Tanong muna natin. Baka nandiyan na po ang ating susunod na speaker. Ang at Ma'am e Ma Emily. Meron na po. Andiyan na po si Sir Joel. Ready na po. Ay, hindi pa. Mukhang hindi pa ready si Sir Joel. So, isa pa tayo. Sino kaya ang... Ibayin naman natin yung reaction button kasi alam niyo na yung heart. Mamaya po ah, sa said tech monitoring po ma, ah, pa ano lang po ng sounds mamaya para na malabas po or mabus ang kanilang energy. Ang reaction naman po natin ay Wow button in 5 4 3 2 1 Ano po? DSN 4-6 Si Sir Talintag Sir, pa-off naman po ng camera and mic Sir Balintag, DSN 4-6 Kaya ang Meron na daw, tignan mo nga DSN Sir Nasa na si Sir Ayun, si Sir. Ready ka na ba, Sir? Ay, meron Mabalan din po yan. Ito. 100 load. Yes, ma'am. Ready na. So, bagay or pagkain na nagsisimula <laughs> sa letter... Oh, sir, by lawn. Letter A. Limang bagay na nagsisimula sa letter A. Bagay o pagkain. Cheer niyo siya. Go, sir, bye. Go, sir, bye. Ayan. Go, sir, bye. Hey. Go, sir, bye. Ayan, sir. Kaya po yan. Hey. Here natin, sir. Go, sir. Crash landing load to. Go, Kuya! A. Asen. Ano ba ba? A. Apple. Avocado. Uh, ashtray. Ano pa, sir? <laughs> Alahas. 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 <laughs> ba, meron pa ako asin? <laughs> Pwede yan. Pagkain. Kahit na ano, nagsisimula sa letter A. Pakita yung asin, sir. Asukal. Asukal. Meron din po. Sige, pakita mo lahat, sir. Alaha. So, yung sing-sing mo, pwede na yun. Oh. 
kompleto na po. Sige sir, pa-open ng video para mabilang natin kung talagang kompleto na. Ma'am, asukal. Asukal. Asin. Asin. Dahil supportive yung tatay ko po, mayroon daw dito alak. Alak. Ay, siyang sara. <laughs> Tatlo, lima yan. Sige sir, pwede na yan. Nanalo kayo ng 100 low. Yay! Palakpakan natin si sir. Thank you, ma'am, Rev. Welcome po. Sa department po yun, ha? Yes po. Next naman po. Oy, meron ng nag-ano dyan, ha? Nagpa May mga boto na silang kiniklik. So, ngayon naman, habang wala pa, isa pa ulit. 100 load. Ang reaction naman natin ay laugh. Para magsitawanan naman po tayo. Laugh naman po. Hindi ko po ikakount yung mga nag-laugh na kaagad, ha? Doon pa lang po, magkakountan muna ako. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pika Ed 4-1, John Louie. Po-open po ulit ng camera and mic. Salat Go Louie! Sa klase niya and mga ko. Go Louie! Go Louie! Go Sir Louie! Go Louie! Go Louie! Go Louie! Hello po, good afternoon! Let's go Louie! Ayan! Go Louie! Go Louie! Go baby! Go baby. Go baby. Go baby. Go Nikki. Pagdala ng mga bagay, pagkain, or makikita sa bahay na nagsisimula sa letter B. As in, baboy. Letter B, sir. Tatlo po. Takbo, sir. Takbo. Ayan. Paso. Pag-oo. Okay na, ma'am. Sige, sir. Pakita po ulit ang tatlong bagay o pagkain na nagsisimula sa letter B. Baso. Baso. Ball pen. Ball pen. Wow, teacher na teacher, sir. Basahan. And basahan. Yay! Nanalo ka na. 100 load. Magka-crash landing na ang load mo mamaya. Tatso, ma'am. <laughs> balato. Balato, balato. Oo, oo. Balato, balato. Balato. Okay, may limag. Isa pa po. Oh. Send Gcash. Pwede na po si Sir. Ah, Sige, isa pa. Yun, may nag-sponsor. Pero hindi na natin sasabihin kung sino. Hello, Ma'am Rev. Hey po. Ready na, Ma'am? Ma'am Rev. Yes po. Oh, meron tayong saklolo. May saklolo na tayo kasi brown out kila Sir Virgin. Hindi natin ma-determine kung anong oras babalik. Uh, nag, nag volunteer si Ma'am Myla na magdi-discuss ng action research. So, uh, mamaya ulit tayo maglalaro sa dulo na lang ulit mga anak. Yung ating price ay naka-standby na lang sa dulo. So, yes, uh, let's call in our nag-volunteer, nag, nag, nag salubutin na lang. Ma'am Myla, thank you so much. Si Dr. Myla Santos, she will uh, give us lecture on action research. Thank you, Dr. Myla. Trabaho lang po. <laughs> um, this is just a supplement uh, material siguro from the, the standpoint of the, the lecture of um, Dr. Virgin a while ago. But uh, what I will be dwelling more is yung sa problem, uh, the process, and practically padaan din natin yung mga different parts of it. Ma'am Rev, I'll share my screen. Ay. Okay na? Nakikita yung aking screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay na. Nakikita na po. Yeah. 
kau pun ingin. Hmm. Nakaano yung aking Okay, so sino naman ang nakikita? Laro-laro mo try mo lang. Ma'am Milet, screen ko na ang nakikita. Yes, Ma'am Miles ha. Okay, Nakiki- okay. Oo, nakikita siya. Oo, sige. Na? Oh, sige. Mm-hmm. Okay na. Ready okay. na. So, this is just siguro yung application of what Dr. Virgin is trying to discuss a while ago bago siya naputol. Um, he's trying to define action research and trying to to establish the, the theoretical basis of the, the action research. So, what I would like to discuss with you shortly and very briefly and hopefully very simply is how are we going to uh, craft, implement, and report an action research. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. So according to, to some researcher, action research is um, just have two objectives. To accomplish and to enjoy. Parang it doesn't um, sound like research, scientific, and um, technical. However, uh, in the field of uh, teaching, everything is enjoyable and everything is um, accomplishing. So even doing the action research is also uh, to accomplish and to enjoy. What are we accomplishing here? As Dr. Virgin is trying to say a while ago, um, we, we are focusing more on the problems, the questions inside the classroom. And as teachers, if we um, realize that there are some weaknesses inside the classroom or there are some problems and questions inside the classroom. And we wanted to probably solve these problems or answer these questions. That's part and parcel of accomplishing t- being a teacher. Diba? Uh, pag nakita natin may problema, may question, but we know for sure there are answers and there are solutions to this problem. That's accomplishment already. And that's part of the action research. And why do we enjoy when doing the, um, the action research? Firstly, to accomplish is to, to, to have enjoyment on it. Okay? And the other thing is, it's not just answering, but rather we are contributing to the well-being and to the welfare of the students um, specifically and to the school, to the institution in general. Hindi kasi ito na practice, sorry. So, I would like to to, to borrow Euripides, a, a well-known um, mathematician and a philosopher, um, when he dis- described what action research is. According to him, it is not the answer that it lightens, but the question. So everything, so everything starts with the question. Okay? What do we do? What do we do with action research is we start with the question. Ganun lang kasimple. Magtanong lang tayo. Okay? Now, so if we start with the question simply, dealing with the introduction is dealing with the, um, the problem itself, the question itself. So simply asking question, how can I improve my student spelling strategy? How can we do? How can we eliminate uh, bullying inside the classroom? Although we are in in the online teaching, can high school students' achievement be enhanced? Will using graphic um, organizers, graphing calculator, technicalities inside the classroom will help academic achievement? mga ganun kasimpleng tanong lang for the welfare of the students. That would already be a, a good start. Okay? Kaya nagtatanong si Dr. Virgin kanina. We all start with the question because as philosophy says, it's not the answer which is more important. It is the question. So let's start asking questions. Okay. So action research as a professional development. So you have the question. Um, it's a part of the development because it's a process of inquiry. Okay, teachers are, are not only teaching, but we are trying to inquire of the well-being of our classroom, especially our students. So what is the big word in the action research? Pag sinabi natin action research, 
this is um, separated from other form of researches, whether it's qualitative or quantitative, because of the big word intervention. Nagiging action research lang ang isang research dahil meron tayong ginagamit na intervention, whether it's a qualitative research or quantitative research. When we say intervention, ito yung sabi ni Dr. Dilia kanina, this is the action that we wanted to um, implore or we wanted to apply so that there will be um, answers to the question. So naka-identify tayo ng problema kanina, naka-identify tayo ng questions inside our classrooms with regards our teaching, with regards the learning of the students. So let's try to identify what possible actions are we going to apply. Those actions, those questions are technically called intervention in the action research. So tandaan natin mga anak na pag nag action research tayo, so my needs analysis, sabi ni Dr. Um, Virgin kanina, okay, you identify the needs in the side your classroom, whether it's your teaching or whether the learning of the, the students, but you have to do something about that. Okay? Action research does not end identifying the questions. Action research does not end in the does not end with um, the, the problems. We have to do something. And that something is supposed to be the intervention. Okay? So action research can focus on the teaching and the learning process. So pwedeng sa'yo, pwedeng sa learner. Action research can be used to solve a problem or institute a change. So hindi lang tayo nag-action research para magkaroon ng, pag, ng, ng, ng solution sa problema natin. But rather, in a way, we are also contributing a change inside the classroom. It could also be applicable to all other um, classrooms that would be um, come along our way. And it would also be a helpful uh, contribution to other teachers. And action research can also be a document for teachers' growth. Well, uh, sa DepEd ngayon, ang laki-laking points yung nakakapaggawa sila ng action research. So although this is a very um, early thing to say that it could be a um, uh, professional growth for you when you do your action research, but the thing is, if you know how to do action research, pag napunta na kayo sa field, it would be a very, very good uh, avenue for your professional growth. Okay? Okay. So you have questions. You have in your mind possible uh, answers. You identify the problem. You have identified possible solutions. Well, ano lang naman din talaga yon. When we know that there is a problem, it does not necessarily mean na hindi natin alam ang solution. Meron at meron. However, identifying the problems and identifying the solutions will not be the end of the action research. Kailangan malaman natin kung anong solution ang appropriate para Ma, ma, ma solve natin yung specific problem na yun. So we have to document the, the, the information. Um, during your orientation, when we have your uh, send-off, we already told you that from the very start of your internship, you create your um, data. You have to accumulate all the informations that you need inside the classroom and document them because that will be a handy thing for you when you do your narrative report and your action research. Ito nga na ngayon. So if you have permanent record, you have built um, participation in the, the school, you have informations at your hand, that's already uh, a good uh, start for your action research. So start documenting. I know sa, marami na sa inyo um, may mga ano na, may mga documentation na. Okay. So when you do your documentation, be sure that you have um identify the sources of your of your data. So yung tinatawag nating sources of background knowledge. Your sources of the background knowledge which you will be um dealing with when you you write your introduction your rrl ganyan so dito natin kukunin lahat yon so your sources of background knowledge will come from networking opportunity opportunities hindi ito yung networking na ano ha commercial when we say networking opportunities this is where you connect with other interns kasi baka you're sharing with with them um the same level of problem the same category of questions so, nakapag nagkakapagtanuan kayo, nakakapag-sharean kayo, 
luma- lumalawak yung ating ano um, possibilities of exploring the um, the target problem you also have the expert knowledge that's why you are assigned to your cooperating teachers your cooperating teachers are the expert in the field what you learn inside the the the, the college of education is practically 75% theoretical but you are already in the field what you see there is what you get so kung ano yung nakikita nyo, yun yung reality what you see in the college of education may probably probably be just the 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 what do you call that the, the implications and the the, the the imagination ganyan pero kung ano yung nakikita nyo at nararanasan nyo ngayon at the moment of your internship is what the reality is and the expert there are your cooperating teachers and the other teachers and faculty members in the school so you connect with them you can get some uh, information from them okay and um you can also have the published materials ito important ito so you dwell on the, the reading materials you go to the internet but you have also to be very very keen in um, identifying your published materials. You have to to cite them properly. Okay? Naturoan naman natin kayo dun sa inyong research, for example, how to cite, how to um, uh, enter in-text citation in your discussion. So, practically, all of this, these three things of sources would um, um, make, impregnate your, your data and your background of your uh, action research. Okay. Ay, shucks. Ayaw na. Okay. Um, ito, siguro bibigay na lang namin sa inyo to. This is um, the um, matrix, or the, the, the format, rather, sorry. Uh, I have taken this from the DepEd Memorandum Order 67.A. Uh, okay, this is what the, um, the format of an action research that they, they are using in the DepEd. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, the title. Sabi ni Doc Virgin kanina, may title na kayo, may mga questions na kayo. Now, if you have the questions, you have to package the, the, the question in such a way that it could be a good title for an action research. Now, there are um, four characteristics of a good action research title according to uh, Hairston and Keen in 2019. Okay, first one, it should predict the content of the research paper. Title pa lang, alam na nang magbabasa kung ano yung inyong action research. So it should include the answers for what, how, and why. So what is the action research? How is the action research um, implemented and administered? And why does this research or the researcher do the action research? So sa so, umpisa pa lang, title pa lang, ando na yung question ng what, how, and why. Another characteristic of a good action research title it it should be an interesting it, it should be interesting to the reader of course. Well, if we are of the same uh, institution, para pareho tayong teacher, probability is we would have the same interest. But the action research is not only for for people of our own institution or within our institution. There might be some other people who would be interested with your research and therefore they may get something out of it. So kahit very limited lang yung pinag-uusapan natin, we're talking about the teaching and the learning process, the educational system, and so on and so forth. But even if these people are not um, part of the, um, the education system, there should be this pitch of interest in, the, in, in your material. At dapat makita yun sa title. Makita natin later on. I'll give you some example. Then third, it should reflect the tone of the writing. Well, Action research is um, at the middle of a formal research and an informal research. Why? As I have said a while ago, there is this um, characteristic of intervention. So there is this individuality in the research. So nandun ka mismo. Ikaw mismo ang nagsasabi ng problema, ikaw nagsasabi ng solusyon, at ikaw din ang magsasabi kung alin sa mga solusyon na yon ang applicable or appropriate. 
So the tone of writing in the, um, the action research is not that very technical. It's more of a conversational. The fourth one is that the action research contains important keywords. And what are these keywords? These are the answers of the what, how, and why. Okay. Let's take a look at this examples of um, titles. The first one, benefits of modular distance learning, a quantitative investigation. The analysis is the title one describe the topic. The topic is modular distance learning and the method of the study. What's the method? Quantitative investigation. But it is not particularly catchy, very technical, very uh, uh, simple yung ating first title. So let's make it more of um, catchy. Okay, now let's take a look at number two. Why online reading materials make the most effective e-learning platform? So from the modular distance learning, we specify it into online reading materials. Okay, and we also added the word effective. That word effective is adding to the catchiness, quote unquote, of the first material or of the first uh, title. Okay, so title two partly describe the topic, which is online reading materials, because it does not give any information. Okay, why about the reading materials? Sabi nga niya. Um, there is no information about the method of the study. Unlike the first title, it has a quantitative, but sa second, although catchy siya, nawala naman yung method. So it could simply be a theoretical or opinion piece, but not a good title. Puntahan natin yung third. The effectiveness of Google Classroom in online learning. O yan, medyo familiar tayo dyan sa title na yan. Title three is somewhat catchier. Why? Again, because of the word effectiveness. But it gives almost no information about the article or about the topic itself. Google Classroom in online learning is a common word. It does not characterize anything at all. Okay, number four. Teachers... On the move, a quantitative report on how student recorded simulation can improve communication skills. The analysis of this uh, fourth title is that the title four begins with a catchy main title. What's the catchy main title? Teachers on the move. Oh, diba? Parang, ano, um, it's a um, title of a movie. Okay, na medyo may action, action um, dating. And it is followed by a subtitle get, that gives information about the content and the method of the study. The content is how students recorded simulation. Okay? And the, the method of the study, because it is more of the, the, um, the relationship of the recorded simulation and the improvement of the communication skills, is more of a quantitative report. So, ang method niya, quantitative. The fifth one, let's go to the fifth one. To be or not to be? A comparative analysis of teacher-directed editing and peer editing in improving written composition in English 9. The title 5 says it all. The what, the how, and the why. The what, it's teacher-directed editing and peer editing in improving written composition. The how, the analysis. So we're going to compare because there is a comparative analysis. We're comparing teacher-directed editing and peer editing. And why? Why is it why? Because to be or not to be, will the teacher do it or not? What would be the advantages and the disadvantage of doing teacher-directed and the peer editing? See how your title would be an introductory intention of the action research. Title pa lang. Alam na kung ano ang magiging um, daloy ng inyong action research. Oh, sorry. Umalip. Okay, so how are you going to develop strong research question? According to a uh, COMS in 2021, kailan lang siya? Okay, a research question should have a clear focus and a, a purpose. So the, the questions of your research should be focus on a single problem or issue. Isa lang, mamili lang kayo. Okay, para mas madali. Are you going to deal with... Um, the, the development of the values of the students in regards to uh, pagpapasya, if it is an ESP, or 
are you going to deal with um, recreational activities that is indoor only? Okay. So, wag na nating isama yung outdoor. Uh, will it be uh, the scientific um, skills of the students in regards to computing um, polynomials? So, wag na yung general na sabi natin, the, 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 skill, the development of the skills in computation of the students. It's very general. So, as much as possible, you limit your title, you limit your, your research question so that it could have focus and purpose. It should also be specific enough. Okay, to be answered, of course. Remember that questions are not enough if they would not be answered. Okay? Kaya nga tayo nagre-research para malaman natin kung ano ba yung pwedeng maging answer sa question natin. So if your um, research question is very general, you might have, um, you, ha you might, well, uh, you need the, the whole semester or the whole year. To, to answer your question. So, limitahan lang natin. Let's just be specific on it. Okay? But, although we have to be limited and be specific with the, the questions, we have also to consider it complex enough to develop the answer. Okay? Baka naman sa, sa simple nung question natin, alam na natin yung sagot kahit hindi pa tayo nagre-research. That's what Dr. Delia is um, discussing um, a while back bago naputol yung ano niya. Baka naman yung question mo, eh pwede lang Ah, uh, hindi na kailangan i-research. Baka kailangan lang na tanungin yung estudyante ano ba ang dapat gawin. Okay? So although we have to be simple and specific, but we have also to to weigh things down that it should be complex enough that there should be a viable and there should be a um, sensible answer to the question. The last is that it should be relevant to your field of course. Don't choose a question that is beyond your control and beyond your grasp. Okay? So that's why we are um, um, motivating you and encouraging you to group yourselves in a very small group at pare-pareho kayo ng, ng field of study. Okay? So if you choose to be in a group that you are of the same level, okay, mas, ma mas mal malilimitahan yung inyong mga um, questions and therefore you could realize how relevant they are. Okay? Okay, how to write a research question? So first, how are you going to write your research question? Dito na tayo. First, you choose a broad topic. Leadership, for example. Okay, then do some preliminary reading about the topic. Ay, ano nangyari? Sorry, sorry. Okay, here. So the, the big word is leadership. Do some preliminary reading and then narrow down the, that, the, that uh, topic into a specific niche. So what kind of leadership? Because you are in school, you might be interested to dwell on school leadership. But this is still a very big topic. Okay, big pa rin siya. Big, big word pa rin yan. So we have to narrow it down more. So from school leadership, we go to good school leadership. It becomes catchy now because of this description of a good school leadership. Now, good, however, is not quantifiable. It may be qualified, qualified but um, for a research question to be, um, I don't know what they call that, you have its direction. It should be quantifiable. So from the word good, we say quality school leadership. So we, ma we might have a very specific dealing of the school leadership and that is the quality what are the qualities of school leadership okay now quality of school leadership is, might be very technical and therefore we might have to look at it in the, the in a more researchable manner so kasi, kasi yung quality school leadership pwede yung magbasa lang tayo and there are some um, materials that would just enumerate what are the qualities of school leadership so yun na natin kailangan mag research but if we say effects of quality school leadership, that makes it a researchable question or that makes it a topic for a research kasi hahanapin na natin yung effect. Okay? So we might be dealing with a data that is already um, within the grasp of our um, population like the, the, the teachers and the students alike. 
okay, we can still narrow down the effect. Now, we, we have to do the, the effect, but pwedeng sabihin natin, ano ka ba ang nakaka-affect dito sa quality? So, we can use the factors affecting quality school leadership. Why is this more limited? Because when you deal with the word factors, you are already incorporating the methodology of your research. When you try to identify what are the factors, you might be discussing um, the research design already. Okay, so you can do uh, quantitative and quantitative. You do some um, questionnaire, okay, a checklist, and so on and so forth. Now, let's just be specific with the factors affecting. Let's go now to the research question. So you have this, this um, topic or title factors affecting the quality school leadership. Let's Translate it now into a research question. What are the factors that affect quality school leaderships? Or what are the effects of quality school leadership on teacher, for example? Oh, yeah. So we, we refocus the, the school leadership on the perspective of the teacher. Okay, But not only on the teacher, but the teacher performance. So at the bottom of the line, we have a very good... Um, a research question that is specific, focused, and researchable. What are the effects of the quality school leadership on the teacher? Teach, teacher performance, rather. Okay. So, how do we start action research? And dami na nating sinabi. But let's start with the question. Let's just with simple statement that can be an action research question. Starting off with just saying, one thing that I would like to change is, pagbalik natin sa classroom on November 3, or pag uwi natin mamaya, let's contemplate of what is happening inside our classroom. Let's put ourselves inside of the, the classroom at the middle of it and ask this possible question. One thing that I would like to change is, or my practice could be improved by, like uh, my teaching practice, the students I work with need what? I would like to know what? I wonder why. The most important thing about teaching is blank. The best learning environment for students is blank. I need to learn how to blank. My students would do better if. If these simple statements would be very clear on us, we can um, be sure that we can identify and we can organize our research question. Oh, sorry. So let's just focus on the intervention. Okay? So the big word in the action research, tandaan natin mga anak, hindi yan action research unless there is intervention in it. So what is intervention? These are the effective pedagogies. Okay? Alam naman na natin yung pedagogies na yan. Okay. So, intervention could be identify natin yung problem, identify natin yung possible solutions. Now, let's apply the solution. At tingnan natin kung ano ang magiging uh, resulta ng ating intervention na yun. The intervention is the action that we do with our questions with our problems. Choosing a single action or pedagogy is an ideal starting point for action research. So for example, you identify your, the weakness of your students in um, computation. So anong pedagogy ang gagamitin natin? What are the strategies? What are the methods? Or if you wanted to do away with um, um, unparticipativeness, kasi ang hirap niyan sa online teaching, hindi mo alam kung nakikinig bang estudyante mo or natutulog na ba dahil naka-off naka naman ang camera. Now, take a look at the possible ways on how to check it. What pedagogy, what method would you be applying so that you would um, maintain the curiosity and the participation of your students? Okay. Uh, ito medyo ano na to, um, technical na to. So there are, these are the different ways on how you're going to um, collect your data. You can use the survey questionnaire tips, 
this is the um, the analysis uh, you will have the interview your observation also okay and so on and so forth uh, okay na si ano hindi ko na isatakal itong data analysis medyo ano na to medyo big na to uh, but remember ito lang medyo uh, before i leave to you um the the discussion let's just be uh, conscious enough with the um, the ethics of the action research um we're doing a research but there should be an ethics of hope pag sinabi doing nothing ethics of hope action research is motivated by an interest in making school a better place for students why are we doing action research because we wanted that the place is a better place for our students to be learning, whether it's virtual or a personal. Action research is also dealing with ethics of caring. It is far too easy to get the, the project done, but let's just be focused and let's just keep in mind that the central focus, the central purpose rather of an action research is that it is for the welfare of both teachers and students. And an action research should be following also the ethics of openness. Action research should be willing to create um, insiders and outsiders in the school. Parents are part and parcel of the, the, the school. So let's keep them also in the, the, in the round. Lastly, action research is a responsibility. As a professional, we are teacher, we are also researcher, we must be committed to the principle of action that we are not just asking questions, we are not just um, identifying the, the problem. It's not enough that we see there are some problems and there are some questions, there are some difficulties inside the classroom. We have to do something. And that doing something is doing the action research. Okay. Okay na po ako. Okay na po, Mamayla. Yes, yeah, ma'am. <laughs> Paano ko na ba ito? I, I, I Thank you so na. much. Thank you so much. Buti na lang may Girl Scout of the Philippines. <laughs> Teka, ma'am. Ano ko lang, ilalabas ko lang yung aking presentation. How will I do this? this? And share lang po, ma'am. And... Di ba? Ha? Ayun, post, share. Ah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mamayla. Okay. Okay. Po. Yeah. Thank, you, oh, uh, thank, you, thank you for that lecture, Mamayla, at sa pagiging Girl Scout of the Philippines. O eto uli yung ating isang Boy Scout na nawala kanina, nagpunta sa bayan ngayon para daw maki-internet. Ay, so, wala. wala. Yeah, nag, nagpunta siya sa bayan daw para maki-internet, umalis siya sa kanila brown out. So, uh, Hopefully, hindi Ayan. na overlap yung aking diniscuss with what Dr. Virgin will be presenting. Yeah, uh, oo, oo. Buti na lang yung umpisa, yung theoretical na present ni Sir Virgin bago yung uh, oo, presentation ni Dr. Myers. Yeah. I just wanted uh -oh. to remind yung ating mga inakay, yung mga interns natin, please jot down your questions later on para baka may mga questions kayo, we will answer it appropriately. Sige, salamat po. Take it away. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hey, Doc. Virjun, ready ka na ulit? Doc, narinig niyo na ako. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Doc Virjun. Pwede ka nang tumuloy. Thanks.
All right, sorry ah. <laughs> Nag brown out kami sa bantog kaya we really do not have the internet there. Okay. Uh thank you very much Dr. Myla for the sharing and uh the mission number sir. I am very satisfied with the uh, the presentation because you have covered the technical aspect of the action research. Uh, buti na lang ang research na Myla. <laughs> Ayun. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, after the investigation, ayun, you need to propose an intervention. The intervention is actually the things that you need to do to solve the problem you have identified when you do the observation and the needs assessment and the verification. So after the proposed intervention is uh, uh, composed, established, and uh, framed, you need to implement the intervention. In the implementation phase, you need to do uh, the following. Number one, you need to observe, you need to record, you need to uh, observe behavioral changes in the in the students. Uh, you need to also record that because whatever changes you will uh, observe is whatever change change you you will observe is very significant as to the implementation of the intervention. Uh, you have taken, as uh, Dr. Myla was saying uh, a while ago. Then after that, you need to reflect on the results, whether you can recommend something about a policy or about a framework or about a particular uh, action that you need to do or others may do in case they also experience the same problem. Then uh, you need to, to go with the cycle again. So that's the cycle of uh, the action research. So dahil na-discuss naman na ni, ni Ma'am Myla yung karamihan dyan, tingnan na lang natin yung, ano, yung sa DepEd format. Ano? Ayaw. Oh, ayun. Uh, I asked the one of the teachers in the, the DepEd uh, to, to furnish me a copy of the format uh, provided by DepEd Region 3, and this is their format. Uh, once you write your, uh, after having the implementation, the result, and after contemplating on the result of the action research that you have done, you need to write it. Um, and you need to follow this one. Since you will be uh, applying soon in the Department of Education, um, you need to follow the format given by the DepEd itself. So title page, table of contents. Part of the table of contents would be the rationale, review of related literature, the research question, Hypothesis, if there's any, this is just an optional. Huh? Significance of the study, the scope and limitation, and then method. You need to write the type of research that you did. Uh, and the respondents, the sampling method that you employed. The proposed innovation or intervention or the strategy you also did. Then the instruments. Then, under methods also, the data collection procedure, the ethical consideration, data analysis, the work plan, the timetable, or the gun chart, cost estimate if there's any, the plan for dissemination and advocacy, uh, the result, and then your references and appendices. Part of the appendices would be the instrument, the declaration of anti-plagiarism, and the absence of... Uh, Plagiarism. Then the consent form to be uh, to be uh, given by the respondents. Just yes, because you will be dealing with your 
students and you will subject them into research. Therefore, there must be a consent, a consent form uh, to, be, to be given by the parents, perhaps, or uh, by the guardian of the students that they are amenable to subject to the research. All right. Uh, Isa-isayin natin, no? Paano ba? Paano ba natin patadaliin yan? Okay, in case, uh, sabi natin kanina, nag nagbigay si Ma'am Myla kanina ng, ano, eh, ng mga sample uh, action research title. Now, pag nagawa nyo ng lahat yun, nagawa nyo, limbawa, kinuha natin yung isa ron, the, uh, for example, ano ba yung kukunin natin doon ng lahat ng daang ko? Mm. Ah, sige, mag-sample na lang tayo ng iba. Nakalimutan ko na eh. You, you, TLE, for example, you found out that most of your students found it, uh, find it hard to do uh, welding. Uh, not because most of them are female, but it is because uh, during the new normal, there is limited face-to-face uh, -face and there is limited uh, welding machine to be used. So what you need to do is to look for a solution to that problem. Siyempre, face, uh, new normal tayo. Saan sila pupunta? Aha. Pwedeng mag-designate ka ng isang lugar na nag-conform sa IATF sa barangay and all other health protocols, then uh, you need to think of possible uh, scenario or actions that you need to do in such a way that your students would attend, could attend the welding class. And it so happened that in your barangay, in, in, in your investigation, there are barangays that uh, implement welding, such as, for example, um, Barangay Santun, then Barangay Kalisitan, and then Barangay, for example, Magtanggol, and in Rizal, West Poblacion, in... Uh, San Leonardo, for example, is Poblacion, and then other barangays also do the same. So, ang ginawa mo is uh, you, you planned for it and you did uh, a specific action such that you could group your students into, let's say, five or six groups you clustered your students and uh, informed them that they need to attend the welding uh, class in a particular, in designated barangay, uh, barangay hall. Ayon. And then, siyempre, kailangan mong isulat yon kasi pag di mo sinulat yan, eh, magiging mababali wala hindi ka magkakaroon wala kang masusulat na action research uh, this is very important it is because we are in the new normal eh teka eh, pag sa publication eh, itong mga ganito sa new normal yung mga innovations na ganito ay gustong gusto nila kaya ang gagawin mo dyan you need to write the actions that you did specific actions uh, kailangan mo lagi niyan and then yun na yung intervention mo so ano yung magiging title mo ron so sabihin mo innovative uh, an innovation in teaching welding to third year or sambayan tinuturo first year ba second year third year junior high school uh, in, for example, uh, na-assign na ka sa San Jose City, tapos doon sila nag-attend sa limang barangay. 
Right. So, kailangan mo i-limit yung title mo doon. And then, after that, uh, kailangan mong ilagay yung mga interventions mo. So, papasok na dyan yung uh, kaninang dinidiscuss ko doon dito sa proposed intervention. Pero teka, naisip mo na yan. Eh, paano mo isusulat dito sa uh, sa iyong ano na pagsusulat nung nung report. So, kailangan mo ito ng rationale, ng review of related literature, sabihin mo na sa new normal, ganito ang nangyari, etc. etc. Tapos sa iyong TLE class, eh, kailangan nilang Uh, they need to learn the uh, uh, welding and part of the lecture would be the actual uh, welding actual welding uh, anong tawag mo dyan? actual welding activities to be done by the students and so Uh, sabi mo dyan that, that there is uh, in, the, in the new normal since COVID-19 is still in the is still uh, affecting its barangay in San Jose City uh, blah 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 etc etc tapos lagay mo na dyan uh, hanggang sa malimit mo yung malagay mo na may gap doon sa sa literature mo, masama, masama mo doon. Tapos maglagay ka ng research question. What are the research question that you need to uh, to let your student learn welding? Uh, tapos lagay mo dyan that the innovation may help the student uh, learn actual welding. Uh, etc. etc. Lagay ka siguro ng tatlo. Walang hypothesis yan. Lagyan mo ng significance, lagyan mo ng scope. Tapos, ang type ng research mo, descriptive. Uh, tapos, yung respondents mo ay yung, yung estudyante na ilan sila uh, ng welding. Tapos, ang sampling method mo ay complete enumeration. Yung proposed innovation mo is uh, clustering your student for barangay welding activity. Uh, ang instrument mo, ano yung instrumentation mo? O edi, ano ba yung, ano ba yung ginawa mo? Uh, Siyempre, meron kang, um, meron kang needs assessment muna na hindi nila alam yung uh, actual welding. Tapos, magpapasagot ka. Siguro, meron kang a uh, self made questionnaire diyan ang data collection mo yon uh, distribution mo through google form ang procedure mo ay through google form din uh, online tapos ang ethical consideration mo is that you let them uh, give you a consent form uh, letting their parents to let them attend the limited ganun clustering class through barangay uh, welding activity tapos sasagot sila ang data analysis mo is whether they welding uh, through the clustering procedure that you did uh, in barangay uh, ang work plan mo yung work plan na dinasabi dito ay yung uh, specific activities that you did ang timetable mo, gagawin mo yan within two weeks or three weeks. Uh, cost estimate mo, wala kasi wala, namang, wala ka namang gagasasin doon. Papa-attend mo sila at libre naman sa barangay yan. Tapos, ang advocacy mo is for you to let other teachers know that though it is uh, in the new normal, limited face-to-face, Uh, you could still do welding uh, through a clustering uh, program uh, with the participation of a stakeholder, specifically the barangay. Uh, yun. So, yan yung nabuo mong program of action sa iyong um, TLE class. So, ganun siya lalakad. 
Now, syempre, hindi ko naman na-discuss yung specific dito, pero most likely, ganyan lalakad, ganyan tatakbo yung uh, action research na ginawa ng isang PLA student. Now, question. Bakit sa work plan timetable, eh, two weeks lang, three weeks lang? Syempre, kasi isang topic lang naman yung uh, welding. Hindi naman yan i-cover lahat. So, kailangan lang na matutunan nila yung welding. Since you made uh, an, you made a need assessment that most of them do not know welding, uh, you, you, your instrument is a self-made questionnaire. Therefore, that instrument will be the one to be analyzed as you complete your uh, action research. So, yun din yan. Dito, papa ma-analyze yan. So, anong type of, of research yan? Sabi natin kanina, descriptive. Eh, hindi ko naman sinabi kung quantitative o qualitative kasi dalawang paraan yan. Pwedeng qualitative, pero pwedeng quantitative or pwede naman mixed. Mixed method. So, pwede pong gawin ang mixed method yan since magpapasagot ka pero pwede mo rin namang i-quantitative. Kaya lang, data ang kailangan mo. Uh, numbers. Pag qualitative, yung instrument mo, eh, qualitative type, uh, mag, magkakaroon ka ng, ano, ng open-ended question, tapos sasagutin nila yan. Um, tapos, from there, hahanapin mo yung mga constructs hahanapin mo yung theme, hahanapin mo yung categories para malaman mo anong nangyari sa ginawa mo uh, na clustering. So, ganun tatakbo, basically, yung isang action research pag sinulat na. Okay? So, siguro, uh, mainam, mas maintindihan natin, magbigay tayo ng sample from Uh, from you. So, sino ang gusto mag-volunteer? Uh, Ma'am Milet, pwede kaming ano, 15 minutes pa, isang sample lang. Okay, sir. Sige, go on. Okay lang. So, uh, anybody from the participants who would like to give me a title and let's try to uh, develop Hello? that into a, a, an action research. Anybody? Chums na naman yun eh. And so I know it's very challenging. It's very challenging. Medyo mahirap lang kasi siya. Kasi parang ini-imagine natin dati. Wala tayong blackboard. Wala tayong whiteboard na ginagamit. Pero siguro in the best way possible, we can discuss that. Anybody would like to give me an example? I-apply natin yung diniscuss ni Mamayla kanina. Tapos, eto, dito lang naman eh. Itong cycle lang naman na itong kailangan nyo. Eh. Itong cycle na to. Meron. Pag wala, ibig sabihin yan, uh, everybody understands the lecture of Dr. Myla and yours truly. Okay. Siguro so, wala nang dahilan. Wala yeah. nang dahilan para hindi, na, para hindi makagawa ng action research yung ating mga studyante because we have two Uh, lecturers, we have two lectures this afternoon on action research. Uh, for sure, naintindihan na ng mga estudyante natin kung paano gumawa ng action research. Now, in the new normal, it's very, very easy to identify problem. Eh. Uh, especially so that uh, your, your class is being done in two ways, I think. One is blended learning and the other one is modular. When we say blended learning, that's combination of 
uh, synchronous class and the module and others who do not have the capability to have the internet, they are doing it in a modular way. And so with that, I think uh, everyone can easily identify problems or problem and may probably uh, develop that into a good action research. Ah, uh, yung ano, wag niyo papatulan yung ano ah. Wag niyo papatulan yung sinasabi nila na yung parent ang gumagawa. Wala pa tayong tayong mga teacher ay hindi dapat bigla-biglang papatol doon unless we have scientific uh, proof or investigation as to uh, the veracity of that claim that parents and guardians are the ones doing the module. Um we really do not have the the evidence as of yet and so uh do not do not try to delve on that if ever you would want to discover whether the guardians and the parents are the ones doing the module then there then probably you need to investigate Ang mga research ngayon na pwede yung ano yung collaboration with parent and teacher eh maganda yon. Uh, one of my students was asking me if if an action research about uh, a face to face class as innovation being done in one of uh, the barangay is okay. I told them that there must be clearance first with the IATF uh, municipal IATF for doing that because the, the the teacher or the the intern will go there uh, remember that CLSU is very strict as to um, the provision of a face-to-face -face. so I think uh, that's not possible to do because we are very strict as to the face-to-face uh, wag muna siguro yun. Let's just do an action research based on um, the Google Google form way of uh, um, gathering data, gathering of data. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Doc Myla and Doc Virjun, for that very comprehensive and. Uh, very informative lectures on action research. So moving on, uh, we have another lecture. This is to be given by one of our colleagues also at the department. Uh, may we call in Dr. Joel M. Torres. Dr. Torres is a graduate of uh, Applied Linguistics at De La Salle University. Dr. Torres, please. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, do you hear me loud and clear on your ends? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so once again, good afternoon. So I'm here to discuss about something that is also equally important as regards to your requirement for your graduation. This is actually included in, uh, this will actually cover the action research which was previously discussed by Dr. Dilia and Dr. Santos. So this is the narrative report. So I'll be giving you some guidelines some, and how is it developed, uh, the contents of it, uh, the mechanics and organization of coming up with a narrative report that we will be truly uh, proud of because a narrative report is something that will be your document throughout because the moment you graduate, this will be given to the college and uh, your uh, predecessors will be looking at it and they'll be seeing what had transpired in your internship program. So it's a document capturing all those wonderful, challenging, and a bit uh, saddening experiences. But of course, uh, the time in which you became champions in your student teaching will also be captured 
by that particular narrative report. So, so this is something that you really have to prepare for so that at the end, you'll come up with a masterpiece really and something you, as I mentioned earlier, you will be proud of. So for the overview of the lecture, I'll be discussing the parts of the narrative report. Then I'll be going to how are you going to organize each of the parts. So I'll be giving some tips and what are those common errors that we are to encounter while we are writing that. And I'll give you also some basic review on the mechanics of writing with focus on the narrative report. So here are the parts of your narrative report. So we have the preliminaries, the introduction, the summary of experiences, and the appendices. If you will see, these are just four key parts, but as you go along each of these parts, you will notice that each of these parts will offer a bit of complexities and a bit of challenge in a way if you did not prepare it earlier. So that's why uh, even in our respective classes, I think we keep on telling you that for you to be able to come up with your narrative report, you should be keeping a diary with you because our uh, something that we did not write could be easily forgotten. So whatever we have written, then there's an easy way for us to really recall it and just put it on our narrative report. So I hope all of you keep diaries of your experiences, although this would be virtually, but all those experiences could be uh, written down and something that you could just get the moment you uh, dwell into actual writing. So you will see here preliminaries. I think we will be given, you will be given templates on how you're going to accomplish the preliminaries. This include the title page, uh, the acknowledgements, you also have the table of contents and the like. And this would be a bit easier because this, there's a template for this. Then we have the introduction. Later on, I'll show to you how an introduction should be written. How are you going to merge the ones, the information that you have lifted from your reading materials and how you're going to merge it with your interpretation and your personal insights along the interplay of these, the facts that you got from the books and your personal interpretation into it. So you come up with a good introduction. Then there's this particular portion, the third one, which is on the summary of experiences. This is something that is really challenging because it is, uh, it has several subcomponents like your first day and orientation, your meeting with the principal, meeting with the department head, when you were assigned to your cooperating teacher, meeting with them, your first virtual teaching, your initial demo, final demo, and also the insights gained through all these experiences that you have went through. And the last is the appendices. So a student teacher should be able to, uh, should have this particular attitude of being a, a good, good in terms of keeping documents because all these documents could also be appended in your narrative report. So let's go into the details of the parts of the narrative report. So the first one is the introduction. So here you talk about the student internship program and what should be discussed here? You have the feature and of course, the importance of the program. So basically, Whenever we write an introduction, we always have that particular dilemma because as we say, it's really hard to start really. And I know in all the endeavors in which we engage ourselves into, the beginnings are always hard, isn't it? But the moment you have uh, started uh, crafting and tailoring, weaving those words, then you, you get to realize that little by little, you get to accomplish something. And that's why for the introduction, especially on the feature and importance of the program, I suggest you do a lot of readings as regards the background of the internship program. Uh, what is it all about? Why is there a need for this? Why uh, pre-service teachers need to undergo the internship program? Uh, what are the features of it and the like? So all of this can be accessible. And especially nowadays in which 
information is just right in our fingertips. We can just click something, but make sure that whatever information that we get are those that are really related to the program we went into. I got a chance of reading something that they talk about internship program, but this is on, on, on medicine, and, and yet they put it on the narrative report for education. What I'm trying to say is that information is free. Information is widely available, and it's up to us on how are we going to filter the information that are presented to us. So we just have to be very mindful and be very critical on all those information that we get on the net. Okay, so it's important in this part that you discuss that internship program is the culmination of all the experiences that you have had as a pre-service teacher. So how will this be a culmination of all those activities? It's actually the application of all those things that you have learned in your prior courses, be general or be professional education courses and how all this would be related to the intern to the internship program okay so that's something that you could also uh discuss here so here's a sample of an introduction but this is a very uh, very short introduction really but i'm not telling that this is not one that you're going to do but this is just like a basis for you uh that you're gonna be uh where, where you're gonna uh, serve as your idea on how you, this section is actually framed or organized. So you get to say the subject SED 4302 is the last subject taken by any student taking the course Bachelor of Secondary Education. It is commonly termed as teaching internship, but in the past we used to call this as a student teaching or a uh, past a past track pa, mas matat malalio pa, or mas luma pa, it, is, it was used to be practice teaching, but now it has developed from practice teaching. We call it, uh, we call it student teaching, and now I think we call it teaching internship. It is the total immersion of a prospective teacher in the real life of becoming a professional teacher. So in here, you're going to experience all of those actual uh, things that uh, actual undertakings that a teacher uh, has uh, will be able to experience the multifaceted roles as we so as we say that a teacher uh, has on his or her shoulders so what else uh, another thing is we, another sample is this one is student teaching or teaching internship actually in your narrative report you could use uh, uh, either of these terms, but you just have to be consistent. If it's either you use student teaching or you use teaching internship, but I think I'm going to ask now our chair, Dr. Estrero, if, what term should we be using now because of the change of the term used in the course? Uh, yeah, so, because we yeah. are now in we yeah because we are now in the new curriculum. I suggest that we stick with teaching internship. Okay, so thank you very much, Dr. Estrella. So yeah. there you have it. It should be teaching internship nowadays. So see, the evolution, no? So teaching internship, you're going to change this teaching internship is the culminating field of experience of the teacher education program. It is the most significant phase of the student certification program. It also represents the bridge between professional preparation and professional practice. By definition, student teaching is a period or teaching internship is a period of guided teaching when the teacher candidate takes increasing responsibility for leading the school experiences of a group of learners over a period of consecutive weeks. The major goal of student teaching is to provide an opportunity for the student learner to make practical applications of knowledge, learning, principles, and techniques of teaching. So you may also want this to become personal in such a way that you have to really um, trace how this program is being implemented in the College of Education. So that's also something that you could include in your introduction. Then you may also uh, compare it to uh, what? Compare it to uh, a thing or compare it to a phase in your life. 
So it, it also, um, your creativity also matters in this part. Uh, where, where are you going to uh, relate student teaching? I remember when I wrote my narrative report, I used a lot of metaphors to describe and to come up with uh, uh, how this is related to something. Say, for example, and I would recall uh, that uh, Dr. Estrera's dissertation has to do with the metaphors that she found on the narrative report of uh, student teachers for uh, how many consecutive years? I think for five consecutive years that she looked into the different narrative reports and she looked at how metaphors were used in the different parts of the narrative report. So uh, this is also something that is personal because uh, you, you get to identify where do you relate student te in teaching internship? If you are to ask where I'm going to relate it or where is it uh, uh, similar or where could I actually uh, see uh, the, the, how is it related to the things that is happening in real life? So what could that be? So something like that. So you could also be creative in that manner. Uh, what else? You could also say, uh, you could also put your personal insights for the introduction then just make sure that whenever you do this, you apply the principles of writing that uh, uh, it's either you use the, the, like the, the funnel from the general to the specific one, or you, you, you first come up with examples and then you come with a more general, general concept about this one. So that's how introduction. So it's still in the introduction. Another component of this has to do with the cooperating school. Uh, here, you're going to provide us with the historical background of the school. This is easy, especially if the school has been a cooperating school of the college uh, for quite some time, because uh, information is widely available. But the, 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 we have to be very cautious also in this part, because here I notice uh, in our experience of editing narrative report that Sometimes they just copy, they, they just repeat what the previous student teacher or intern presented in his or her narrative report without actually updating them. See, so it's, it's okay because this is just, because this is history and this is a common knowledge or common document per se, but there are instances that you also have to read it and you have to update them. Say for example, uh, because they keep because they believe this is a common document and they would not be reading the latter part of it and the tendency is that they also be copying the same but it's no longer applicable in that particular uh, year because information and achievements and the profile of a school definitely vary in that particular year so they change there are those information that are uh, not constant so you have to really look into them so in here, you have to look at the establishment of the school, the administrators then and now. Sometimes they just stop in, in, in a certain period without actually trying to really capture all those who have become administrators of this particular school or the cooperating school. Then, of course, common would be the mission, the vision, and core values. Uh, then you go to the current profile. This is what I was telling earlier that you really have to update this from time to time. Say, for example, what includes the profile? Here are, we have a school category, we have the programs offered, the number of departments, the teachers, the number of teachers, and of course their ranks from teacher one to three. Then you go to head teacher, to master teacher, to principal. So you also have to capture that. Uh, the number of enrollees for that particular school year, referring to the school year when you have your internship. And of course, their achievements, uh, salient achievements, uh, the milestones, the best practices of that school could also be captured, especially now during the pandemic, in which uh, I know most of the cooperating schools have been documented, have been documenting all their best practices. And that's also something that you might want to feature. So, Remember that when you are writing about the cooperating school, it's something that you are also trying to inform others, your fellow student teachers or student interns who were not 
deployed in that school, trying to inform them of this is where I had my teaching internship. This is how uh, uh, this this is how I would want you to meet something like that. I would want you to meet or I want you to encounter my cooperating school. So as much as possible, try to best uh, to put a uh, best information. Uh, put uh, those uh, uh, achievements and also the, as I said earlier, the milestones of this school should also be captured here. So I, I believe you, you can do this by trying to ask your cooperating teacher or the head of the school or do some research. But the thing is, uh, there are instances that most schools uh, do not put their profile or their achievements in their website or some even in their Facebook page. So you really have to ask them. You really have to search for those information at this point. Okay, so siguro at this early, you have to really do some interview on your cooperating teacher on what do they know about your cooperating school. Or if you are, you could also ask your team leader, but of course, you do not, depend, do not merely depend on uh, what your team leader will be giving to you because sometimes we all know that the team leaders are really occupied with uh, trying to uh, send in for, send in for relay information to other student interns. But uh, we have to also really take extra effort on this part. Next is the principal. This is still part of the introduction, the principal. Uh, you may want to begin with the overview of the principal's roles, okay? So I remember during the time I wrote my narrative report, I, con I uh, compared, compared the principal to a rudder, to the rudder of the ship, like they set the direction, okay? The principal is very crucial in any school because they are the ones who set the directions, who set the goals, and who try to, after setting these goals, they are the ones in charge for realizing these goals, really. So you might want to begin this section with uh, why are their principles, what are expected of them, and what are the roles that they must have to accomplish. So you may want to begin with that. Then you may also want to talk about the educational attainment of the principal, including the institutions where the degrees were obtained. Uh, one common error is uh, errors that I'm Emily. Nawala si Sir Joel. Nawala po si Sir Joel. Baka nawalan po ulit ng kuryente. Kuryente. <laughs> Pasensya na po. Medyo nagkakaroon tayo sa... Mayroon kasing rot rotating brown out sa lahat ng mga areas. So, pahintay lang po ulit. Sa mga nanalo po pala kanina, pwedeng pa-PM na lang po sa akin yung... Ano, May chat po ako sa inyo. Direct message po yun. Pa-PM na lang po. Thank you po. Hintayin lang po natin si Sir Joel po. Then yung kung meron pong mga tanong kanina about po sa action research, pwede nyo na pong itanong ngayon habang hinihintay po natin si Sir Joel po. Okay lang po ba yun, Ma'am Emily? Mag yes, yes, please. Oo, tama. Thank you, Ma'am Rev. Yes, yung mga gustong magtanong about action research, pwede nang magtanong while waiting for Doc Joel to be uh, reconnected again with our in our uh, meeting room. Ma'am Milet, Ma'am Rev. Yes po. Yes, Ma'am Miles. May nag-PM sa akin na nahihiya daw magtanong. <laughs> Pero yung groupings ng action research kasi when we are when we did the orientation during the send off uh, we announced that it would be in a small group 
So, hindi siya individual. Uh, sabi ko sa kanila, it would be a maximum of four. Pwede na siguro yun. Kasi if they will be in on um different level and categorically they are in the same discipline, pwede na siguro isang grade 7, 8, 9, 10. O kaya naman, there will be four in each level. So, apat silang naka-assign sa grade 7. Pwede ng small group, ma'am, yun. Ha? Yes, ma'am. Pwede na, ma'am. Yung... At saka maganda yung group of four dun sa pre-recent ni Doc Emil na study niya about pair group at saka yung uh, ano tawag doon, small group na effective ay yung four, four members in one group ay effective daw yung uh, grouping na yun. So, yes ma'am, pwede yun, yung four groups. Uh, four persons in one group. Max ma'am yun, max yun. Opo, opo. Yes, ma'am, Miles. O, maximum na yun. Hello, ma'am, Myla. Meron pong question. Ay, may nag-send po sa akin ng title about sa action research po. Nasa chat group po. Pwede na daw po ba tong topic niya or... Oh, ito ba yun? Impacts of recorded step by step discussion strategy with techniques and application of Vedic mathematics on the numer numeracy level of I know um, when you say impact na lang natin yun, I singular na lang natin the impact recorded step by step discussion strategy ano oh bali yan na rin daw po kasi yung intervention po nila yung step by step discussion mm Oh, but how are you going to validate the result? How would you know the impact? Ano magiging um, instrument natin? I mean, magiging data natin dito. Nasa, it, nasa, nasa ano kasi siya eh, nasa YouTube po siya. Hindi po siya makapasok sa Zoom dahil di daw po kaya ng data. Kaya binato lang po sa akin yung title po niya. Kung ano daw po yung suggestion po. Makikinig na lang daw po si, so from BS Ed. Or dash two po siya. Oo, oh, oh, math, mga math major ito. This is a good topic actually, pero i-singular na lang natin yung impact because we're talking about impact in general. So collective, ano na lang yun, a collective uh, principle. So we would, uh, the, the objective primarily of this title is to see the, um, the effect of the step-by-step -step discussion strategy ano, uh, for the, uh, the level of mm. the in grade 7. Malawak yung level ng numeracy ng grade 7. So, if you would like to have it in a one month observation, you just siguro simplify it. Just take a very specific uh, numeracy skill sa grade 7 that has to do with the, the um, Vedic. Wag mal malawak yung numeracy eh. Okay. Yun, that's one one ano um suggestion. suggestion. Thank you po, ma'am. Then may another question pa po from Ma'am Romeline. Magandang hapon po. Ang magiging research advisor po ba namin ay ang critic po o ang aming CTO cooperating teacher po. Salamat po. Mamilet o ako na. Thank you, Ma'am Miles. Go ahead. <laughs> well, your cooperating teachers will be your co-author of the study because it's still your um, study. Practically, it's your, your own study. So they will just be uh, contributing to your study. Co-author lang sila. Your advisor will be your supervisor student. Uh, technically, you will be submitting the action research to your supervisor. It would be your supervisor who would be uh, assessing and validating your action research. But your cooperating teachers will be very, very helpful in um, developing a very good action research in a way. Thank you, Puma. Meron pa po from Ken po uh, 
parental involvement in the modular distance learning challenges and opportunities among the parents of Munoz National High School Annex learners from Vika Ed. Yan naman daw po yung kanyang topic na. Ito yung ano, na-discuss at ato kanina, napahapyawan ni Sir Virgin. So, we could have a very good um, impression siguro from Dr. Delia. Isa pa po from 4-6 kay Sir Christian. Delia, baka may, may ano siya, impression Ay. din dun sa ano na yun. Yung sa title ni Ken. Ano pa si Dr. Delia? Parang na-disconnect siya, ma'am, kanina eh. Ah, baka wala. O oh, sige, so, sige. Si so, before, ano, parental involvement in the modular distance learning challenges opportunities among parents <laughs> of... Uh, parental involvement is a general term. The specific. Anong involvement do they have to deal with technology? Or will it just be the, the, the resources ba? Or will it be more of the emotional and um, the psychological well-being of the students or um, academic? Ba? So we have to consider also the demographic characteristics of the parents so that we would uh, validate what kind of involvement are we trying to look at um, in, in dealing with their, the modular learning of their children. Major spe specific pa natin siya. Remember, you're go just going to do this for one, one month. Okay? Pag gusto natin ng medyo malaki-laking project, we, uh, that would be probably after na lang. But at the moment, I suggest you limit and you, you deal with a very specific uh, aspect of the, the, the action research. But that's a good title actually. Ang gagaling. Nakaka-come up na tayo ng mga ganyang titles pala. Sige, Ma'am Red. Nabala ko pa lang. Ito, Ma'am Red. Ito ba sa ako? From Christian Sambrano. Maaari po bang humingi ng comment para sa proposed title? ESP yun, ano? Tapos Opo, yung ESP. Special. O, yung ganda. That's catchy. Upholding learners' interest in ESP subject through gamified assessment. Uh, hindi siguro upholding, Christian, but that's a very good term. And that's very, very um, professional. Pero wag mo na siguro upholding. Um, we'll just to maintain the interest. We're, 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 we're trying to maintain the interest. So, um, mag-focus tayo how we are, um, how we would be maintaining the, the interest of the, the students through gamified assessment. I think there are various uh, types of gamified assessment. Uh, sa ano siguro yun? Paki identify which of those gamified assessment lang ang gagamitin natin para hindi tayo masyadong ma overwhelm. Yeah. Thank you po, Mamayla. Uh, follow up question lang. Follow up question po kay Ma'am Romeline. Sino po ang mag approve ng research title ng um, advisor po ba o ang um, cooperating teacher po? Dadaan pa rin sa cooperating teacher. The, the cooperating, cooperating teacher will um, initially have uh, the, the direction and the approval of your action research. But kasi silang nakakaalam kung ano talaga ang nangyayari diyan sa loob. The, the your supervisor however will be um, more of the the assessment of the action research. But it would be also very helpful if you would ask suggestions <laughs> from your cooperating teachers and also from your supervisors. Thank you po ma'am. From Vital Ed 1-1 Ay, sorry po. For Dash 1, good afternoon po in Munoz Annex. We are done in research title and research proposal po. Naghihintay na lang po kami ng format and matrix from supervisors. The format okay. was presented to by Dr. Delia a while ago. Um, there are also some copies of that in the, in the in the um, depth and order. 
So that would be a very good um, reference also. Ba, nakapag-gather na kayo ng data, that's good. Then, ito daw po ang kanilang title, ma'am. Skills and de Development and Learning Competencies of the TLE Students of Manila's National High School Annex during the Pandemic Basis for Development Program. Ano yung achievement? Performance? Let me have the first part of the title, please. Hindi ko na-catch you on, Mamrel. Skills and Development and Learning Competencies of TLE Students of Manila's National Annex during the Pandemic Basis for for a development program. Learning competencies is a very general term like academic performance. Mm -hmm. So, anong learning competency ang focus natin? Ayun. So, okay. dapat specific. Ayun, pwede na rin title yan. Yeah. It could be a title later on sa discussion na lang siguro uh, within, the, within the discussion of the action-based search. Um, part of the methodology sa limitation okay. and delimitation doon na lang natin specify what um, are we focusing on. Thank you po, Ma. Andiyan na po yeah, yan. Thank you. Joel. Thank you, Doc Myla. Yeah. Ma'am Rev, nandiyan na si Doc Joel. Nag-data oh. lang daw siya. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Myla, for uh, yes, ma patiently assisting our students in their titles. Yung ibang mga titles, siguro mga anak, you can start. Kung may mga title na kayo naisip, pwede nyo nang i- ibigay sa mga supervisor nyo so that they could also comment dun sa mga title na uh, nagawa na ninyo. Okay. Dr. Joel, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I know the people who are using Converge are also experiencing similar problem. I think I, I, I've been experiencing this since one o'clock. Are you also experiencing the same? Will this type one is the same or it's only uh, for me? Yes, Kailan sir. Na na? Po namin. Hello? Hello, yes, sir. We're the same po. Mm, yeah, oh, oh. meron tayong rotational brown out. Can you please type one in your chat box if you also experience us internet? Yeah. Or converge, no? Okay. So anyway, oh, wag mag na report na, no? Okay. So going back. Okay. Clear pa naman po. Am I still clear po on your end? Apo, apo doc. Yes, po. Anyway. Okay, hello. Okay, so. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, parang hindi po kaya nung mag-share screen ni Sir Joel po. Okay lang po kaya isend sa akin yung PowerPoint po niya tapos. Oo, siguro. Kasi kung hmm. data lang, baka nga hindi kaya nung mag-share screen. Para mag-ano na lang. Uh -uh. Sige po. Po. Okay lang po ulit ma'am, i-ano ko po yung question kanina dito abang hinihintay ko po yung... Oo, oh, oh, yes please. Thank you. Ma'am Rev? Uh, yes po ma'am, sorry po minute pa po. Okay lang. May may question yung mga science dito, uh, science Opo. major. Oo, sabi nila ma'am, six members lang daw sila. Kung mag-aapat yung isa, dalawa na lang. Maghati na lang kayo, tatlo-tatlo. So you will have two groups. <laughs> two groups with three members. Ma'am, kami po five. Hindi rin po ba pwede i-sama na po yung isa? Or we need to group ourselves in three or two? Mamilet? Ay, 
Na-miss ko yung tanong. Na-miss ko kasi tinasagot ko si Joel at lalabas daw siya ng bahay para mag-internet. Eh, sinasagot ko siya. Ano na nga yung tanong, anak? Ano? Five. Five daw sila, ma'am. Five po kami. And ano, pwede, pwede po bang isang group na po kami or we need to group ourselves in two and three members. Thank you po. Hello. Uh, five kayo sa buong major ay ah, sa naka-deploy sa isang school. Ay hindi po ma'am sa ano po namin. Major po. Ah, sa buong major na 'yon. Parang maganda ring mag-split para noon meron namang comparison yung study. Okay po ma'am. Thank you po. Hello po, ma'am. Hello po, Dr. Joel. Ma'am Emily, dito po ba tayo? Dito po ba nag-stop si sir? Diyan, oo. Thank you po. Um, Ay, antika-tika. Yung susunod yata ang slide dyan. Okay. Ayan, Ay, principal. principal. Pwede mo nang iskipan siguro itong principal. Na-discuss na niya to eh para mabot yung data niya. Sige pa. Ayan, summary of experiences. Pasensya na po. Medyo... Tat tatawagan ko lang siya saglit kung ano ang pasya niya, kung okay na na... Eh, naka, pwede naman na natin makita ito eh, yung mga ili-lecture niya. So from okay. here siguro, kung hindi na talaga siya makakonek, ah... Uh, try ko na lang na i-discuss pag hindi Sige na po. siya nakakonek. Wait lang, tatawagan ko lang siya. Sige po. Ay, Ay, Emily, dito na po ako. Kaya lang, na natakot po ako. Baka mawala ako. Ayan, okay. Sige, <laughs> Sige go. Ako, mawala ako. Uli ako eh. Sige go. Sige, friend. Mambalik tayo dun sa ano. Okay na tayo dun sa ano. Yan na ba tayo? Writing the summary. Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. So this is important uh, to for you to really capture what happened during your first day and your orientation. Though it's a virtual, it's important that you have to keep a diary with you. And say, for example, uh, you may also talk in that time where you excited uh, about your teach, actual teaching internship, about your deployment. Then we had orientation by your respective, uh, how did it go? Uh, what had transpired during the orientation? So if you are really that uh, keen on all those information that are being given to you, you may also want to uh, capture that in your narrative reports uh, that were given to you during uh, how it would be different from the usual or from the prior COVID student teaching, all those things. You may also want to document it here because basically you are the second batch to have your student internship during the pandemic. So you may want also to put it in your first day in orientation, what were uh, discussed to you by the the school nurse the school principal the department heads then you also have the your first uh day with your uh cooperating teacher or even the, with the principal did you have a separate orientation with the principal if you had then what did the principal tell you what did she or he remind you of uh especially in the conduct of virtual blended classes so those are the things that you may also want to capture here. Then you also have here working and dealing with the cooperating teacher. So you want to know, earlier you discussed about your cooperating teacher, her professional background, her career, uh, the subjects uh, she teaches, and the like. Uh, you may also want to to tell here the kind of uh, professional relationship that you have with the cooperating 
teacher uh, what were those important did she uh, what were the instructions given to you as regards classroom management as regards uh, classroom assessment especially now it's pandemic uh, what did he or she remind you of to ensure that assessment would be that authentic and the kind of assessment that you will give to your learners are the ones that could really capture uh, the ability of your student uh, strategies teaching strategies that uh, were taught to you by your cooperating teacher so everything everything so beyond the professional what else uh, were there instances that were you able also to sometimes beyond the professional boundaries uh you also had the chance to talk about personal lives <laughs> pero uh yung mga ano lang yung mga pwede lang sa narrative ano ang i-share niyo wag naman yung lahat lahat naman na pero the good thing here is that you, the kind of interaction it's the kind of interaction that you have had with your corporate teacher though it's virtual right because it's also interesting to document with the kind of mode that we have now how do uh, corporate teachers and uh, the student interns interact with each other and what were the usual uh, topics that they talk about then we also have the working and dealing with the students it's also important that you talk about uh, the kind of students you have uh, although it's although you just see them virtually how are you going to assess them virtually and uh, do you, do you find them uh do you find them fun to uh fun to be with do you do you find them challenging and do you find it uh I, I mean do you find it challenging to teach them or are there what, what what is the composition of the students are they heterogeneous okay uh are they uh excited about what are the things that excite them in a lesson say for example if you're teaching this particular subject uh, especially if you handle this subject and incorporate these topics in the uh, in that particular lesson does that excite them something like that so you try to come up with a profile of who your students are say for example if you are teaching different sections so how would you compare your interaction with them so those are the things that um, might be uh might be put here you may also uh, want to include here instances in which you were able to help the student in his uh professional or in his uh, classroom concerns something like that oh well, so okay a participant mentioned you students are annoying online so bullying online is real diba? Parang ganon. so how how will you feel uh, how do you say that there really is bullying online so something like that so as a teacher i feel i was bullied during those times and you narr narrate that because again i tell you these are interesting uh, forward-looking anecdotes that happen inside the classroom simply because uh these are fresh experiences so we, we, we want to really know how how are these experiences affecting the student interns so that eventually as you reflect as we the readers reflect on this we might come up with some guidelines as well on our end so uh do you, do, do you find the students despite of the challenges that they come across with with the new normal do you find them still motivated to learn or uh or there were there instances uh, that you think that they're no longer motivated and uh, like you, you also have uh, those uh, concerns with regard to the flexible learning modality that the school is uh, implementing. Then we also have working and dealing with other student teachers. How, how does collaboration uh, push through or how does it, uh, how do you go with collaboration in the time of pandemic? Uh, in the past, right, uh, you would have meeting from time to time, uh, personal meeting after class. That was in the face to face. But how how does uh, interaction among student teachers happen? So we 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 are also interested to know all this 
things. So how did you assign, how did you divide yourselves on the different tasks that are assigned to you? Uh, do, do you also, you were also able to come up with a digital or virtual programs that you were the ones who is spearheaded as, as student teachers. So what, what are those usual interactions that you have as a student teachers, diba? Ito yung importante doon. Uh, do you also do Google Meet from time to time? Do you also share uh, your experiences with your other, uh, with your fellow interns? Were there instances that, oh, uh, you get to talk to them and you say, oh, bakit naman ganyan ting naranasan ko nung, ano, sa mga estudyante niyon? Ganoon din ba sila sayo? Then you get to compare notes, di ba? Well, I, 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 I introduce this to them and, and they seem not interested about it. But I heard when you talk this topic to them or when you opened up this topic to them, they were quite interested. So what went, what went wrong on my end? So those are the usual things that we get to ask and we get to share uh, on the levels among you as student interns. What are those topics? Or sometimes you also talk to each other when it comes to what, uh, what are the best, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, visuals, PowerPoint presentations, or multimedia tools, the OBE, the software that you could use so that you will ensure that uh, the lesson will be interactive. Then we also have the working and dealing with other school personnel in the community. But this is quite, uh, I don't know if this is, can still happen. Because in the past, diba, kami, in our narrative report, we talk about dealing with the security guard, dealing with the people in the canteen, dealing with the administrative aid and the like. So now, uh, other than your cooperating teacher, other than the school, uh, other than the department head, then the administrator and the students, who else do you interact with? Or perhaps the parents, right? The parents would be uh, like, the parents are, would be uh, communicating with you from time to time and they will like uh, monitor the status of their uh, children. So you, you try to capture all those wonderful uh, stories that you have during the, uh, student, uh, during the teaching internship. Then you also have the first classroom teaching experience, which is the virtual. Okay, how was that? Uh, you know, for me, uh, in, in my first experience as a virtual speaker, it's so uh, it, it's something that you are not used to, and it's really hard. It's really challenge on our part to be discussing, especially if you don't see audience, if you don't see your listeners. I just see your pictures. I just see and be behind the picture, I don't know what's going on, right? So unlike in the face-to-face -face that you get to see the reaction of your students, you get to see them tilt their head and they're like, they have to blink their eyes or they feel sleepy or they feel disinterested about the topic. But now all, you are clueless. You're, you're basically clueless. So I think you might also have the same experience, uh, first classroom teaching experience virtually. How was it? Uh, how did you cope with the fact that uh, you don't see them? Or I don't know if you ask them to open their videos. But of course, the reality in our country is that uh, our bandwidth is not that uh, uh, large. And if we open our cameras all together, then that might actually affect the signal, isn't it? So the thing is, um, how did you cope with the challenge of the teaching virtually? Especially if you are not yet accustomed to the face-to-face, -face, here you are, you are now a virtual teacher. So how was it? So how did you prepare for that? So those are the things that you might want to include here. Then we go to the initial demonstration teaching, okay? Uh, by the way, do we already have a schedule for initial demonstration teaching? Yes, you will give your schedule. So Dr. Emily, do we, also, do we already have the schedule for initial demo? Um, Mamayla, we have the calendar of activities, um, but okay. the, the, the dates, sir, are very flexible because we have to wait for the schedules. We have also to adapt to the schedule of the cooperating schools. Yes. So tentatively, it was scheduled um second week of October at or first week, <laughs> but it would depend on the cooperating schools. Sige, sir. Mamayla? Mamayla? 
Yes, yes though. Is, uh, yeah, is, is it okay? Kasi dun, dun sa mga handle ko, in-announce ko na sa kanila that if they are ready, they can message me anytime para pwede na akong pumasok. Para hindi yeah. magpatong-patong yung schedule, if that would be all right. Yeah, because we have a lot of uh, interns assigned to us. That would be a good uh, action, siguro. Basta, um, as far as the cooperating schools are concerned, they ask me to to check their schedules also in regards to our uh, demonstration teachings. Para alam din daw nila. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you po. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Myla and Dr. Estrella. Now, no. stop talking about first classroom teaching, uh, initial demo teaching, right? So, again, most of the student interns in the past would tell how did they prepare, how was their night prior to their initial demo teaching, what were their feelings, uh, what were their thoughts, what were those, those thoughts uh, going on during, those, uh, during the night prior to... Uh, initial demo teaching and how did they prepare? How did their cooperating teacher assist them? Were they given as additional reading material? So all of those things before and during the demo teaching, were there technical glitches? <laughs> okay, Were there internet uh, connectivity problems in your respective areas, right? A power interruption perhaps or uh, everything went on smoothly. So lucky you, right? So I remember during my first, my initial demo teaching, I had a, I had a problem with regard to the use of the audiovisual room where I had my initial demo teaching because all I knew then was uh, the audiovisual room uh, was available and I asked all the teachers and they said they were not having classes, classes in the audiovisual room for 30 to 3:30. And my fault was I did not ask the school principal who was the one in charge conducting her, her class in the audiovisual room. So I, I narrated that in my narrative report. So th those are the things that you might want to include in your paper for the initial demo. Then after that, it's not only that uh, during the teaching, after the post conference that you have, that you will have rather. So what did your cooperating teacher tell you? What were the observations as well as the supervisor? So you may also want to include it there. I think those are the information that are somehow lacking in the previous narrative reports that we have checked. So this is something that you may want to add. So to really capture what transpired in your initial demo teaching virtually. Then you also have the final demo. So what was the topic? Was the feeling the same or you will a bit relaxed, more relaxed for the final demo because you already have the initial, which you call the practice. And then here comes the final demo teaching and you get to say, oh, I'm more relaxed at this time because I'm done with the initial demo. Or was it uh, opposite? You were relaxed in the initial and you are more tense in the final demo. So you might want to tell people include that in your narrative report what else uh the actual uh demo teaching what happened were the students participative sometimes i also notice here that they put the the reason for choosing that particular class as a, their uh demo class right say for example you handle four sections same subject but you will choose this section over the three and you have your reason right because you feel that they're more participative and students here i know that they will not fail me especially this is a final demo so you may also include it there what was the topic how was it okay and of course the uh post conference is also important here you get to tell them uh, what happened. Uh, what, what happened in the postcon? Uh, were the remarks or were the observations given to you during the initial demo no longer raised at this point, or the cooperating teacher no longer saw those uh, observations in the initial demo, and they were no they were no longer seen in the final demo, and that would be good. That means 
you have improved and that means that you really have uh, uh, taken their comments seriously and tried to avoid them in your final demo teaching or were the comments the same okay or did they say that you have in, you you improve a lot in the final demo teaching so those are the things that you might want to include for this one and also the post conference to be given by the supervisor then the last is the insights gained so here overall that would be your personal reflection the overall uh, assessment of your uh, performance during the student teaching program uh, that also tells about all of those realizations that you had all, all along uh, your the lessons you've learned basically could also be uh, reflected here so this is something personal where you try to recall all the experiences and try to put it in here and come up with uh, your personal insights which is something that you will leave to future student interns uh because as we say we don't learn from our mistakes rather we learn from the insights we get from our mistakes so it's important that you have to provide them with wonderful insights so that all those uh errors or mistakes that you have encountered would be uh, beneficial to them and something that they could reflect on and something that they might avoid too or you may also say here that you are thankful to all of those experiences be it good or bad be it challenging or rewarding because all these experiences tend to shape you and mold you to becoming an effective and efficient professional teacher that's how you're gonna and this so you, you are thankful to all those wonderful experiences that you have had and next okay so i think i will uh, yeah narrative report its mechanics and organization i think I, I have to end here because these are like uh i no i'll just do it uh run down Okay, very fast na lang. What to remember for the mechanics. First is use personal pronoun. Use I. I and my cooperating teacher. Uh, because in the past, we used to say the author and the cooperating teacher. But you will realize that as you go on with the parts of the narrative report, it becomes more complicated if you use the third person. So I suggest you use the first person, the personal pronoun I. Next is uh, use active voice, rather passive voice. So you would say, uh, my cooperating teacher informed me of the lesson, of the first lesson, rather than you telling me, I was informed by my cooperating teacher about the first lesson. So use the active voice rather than the passive voice, because active voice is a bit, uh, uh, requires lesser number of words, and it's more, uh, it's more vivid. And the do word there is highlighted. That's why you have to really use active rather than the passive voice. Instead of saying, uh, the ball was kicked by the boy, you may say, the boy kicked the ball. So it's shorter and the message is clearer and the doer is highlighted. Okay, so the same is true with your narrative report. You always have to use the active voice rather than the passive voice. Next is, you have to be accurate and concise. Okay, accurate as regards the numbers, accurate as regards the ranks, accurate as, as regards the activities, and concise. If you can say it in a shorter way possible, then do it. Instead of saying in the event that, you may just say if, uh, due to the fact that, you may just say uh, because. So those are examples. Be accurate and concise. Later, we'll have examples of those things. Moving on. Language is formal in the narrative report. Uh, you avoid contracted words such as, here are some examples. You don't use the words such as, here are they. Okay, yeah, so uh, the informal and the formal counterpart. So instead of saying tell, inform. Okay, instead of saying say hello to, give my regards to, say sorry, apologize. So the list is there. And another one is as white also contracted forms of words such as let's see. Okay, do not instead of uh don't don't use don't instead you can use do not 
could not, couldn't. Okay, so the ones in the blue, ayan, ito yung mga i-avoid natin. Uh, no, the, the ones in the blue, sa first line, ayan, i-avoid natin yan. We could just say do not instead of don't, could not instead of couldn't. He is is used of is preferred than his. We are than were. Okay, so avoid the contracted forms. What else? Spelling, uh, spelling of words. Okay, so we have the British and the American. Let's see. Uh, when it comes to spelling the words, okay, color versus color. Remember the O U R. Okay, the double L and the R E. Okay, so color with the U R versus color with an O. So the difference between this one is that with the O U R, this is the American and British, and the color with the C O L O R is the American English. So since the Philippine English, its parent English is the American English, we prescribe to the uh, one with the O, one with the single L, and one with the E R other than the R. E, okay next is okay say for example for the american english you say gray is a color for the british english gray is spelled with an e instead of a and color is spelled as ou with an ou instead of o alone okay moving on Okay, this is the what I was telling earlier. So theater, theater. Okay, canceled with a double L. Aging with a E. Labor with a U. Catalog with a U E. Okay, realized with an S versus Z. Okay, so these are examples. So be consistent with the American and the British English. We are we we Filipinos are using uh, more often the American English. But if you want to use the British spelling you just have to be consistent all throughout your narrative report so i suggest you better use the american variants next is okay so the world english test actually i cut that one in my earlier presentation okay pruning the redundant avoid saying the same thing twice so you say when my cooperating teacher saw my lesson plan, she told and instructed me to repeat my lesson plan again one more time so that it would be improved for the better. So see, there are a lot of uh, redundant uh, expressions and there are a lot of redundant information presented here. So avoid that one in our narrative report. Be concise. So instead of saying this, we can say, let's move to the, uh, the next one. Okay, as saying, when my cooperating teacher saw my lesson plan, she instructed me to improve it. See, lesser words, but you meant the same. So uh, it's always important that we have to be very uh, cautious on the number of words that we use in our writing. Next is, okay, a phrase that repeats itself, like true fact, 12 noon, I saw it with my own eyes, okay? They are called pleonasm, and they do not add uh, beauty in a technical paper like your narrative report. So, uh, but if for creative reason and for emphasis, uh, we can use it sparingly, but as much as possible, try to avoid them. So examples of pleonasm that we could avoid in our writing are as follows. Let's see. Okay, okay. so here are those redundant phrases. Let's see. Beware of the following in your respective writing. Let's see, what are these? Okay, 12 midnight. Instead of saying 12 midnight, it's midnight, okay? Because it's either noon time, it's 12, it's noon, and it's midnight. So you just remove the word 12, uh, the number 12, because midnight and noon refers to a specific time of the they, the noon is when we have our lunch, and the midnight and is at night time, okay? So that's the usual uh, day of our, uh, time of our sleep. And instead of saying a total of 14 students, we may say, a total, instead of 14 students, okay, what else? We could also say, instead of saying biography of her life, we could actually say biography, we also have here, 
uh, circle around. We just, just say circle. So these are examples. What else? So we just do it run uh, fast. Okay, close proximity. We just say proximity. What else? We have here each and every. We could just say, uh, instead of that, we could just say each. Then we also have uh, what else? end result. We could just say, it's either that's the end or that's the result. Okay, you just choose one, each, each other end or result. Next is exactly the same. You could just say the same. Then we also have free gift. It's just a gift. Okay. What else? You, you, we also have here other examples. Repeat again. You can just say again or repeat. Okay. Next is uh, reducing clauses to phrases and phrases to single words. Be alert for clauses or phrases that can be paired to simpler, shorter constructions. The which clauses can often be shorter to a simple adjective. Be careful, however, not to lose some needed emphasis by over pruning the word, okay? So let's see examples of this one. Look for phrases that you can emit in your writing, especially in your writing. Okay, as a matter of fact, okay, that is not actually helpful in your narrative report. As a matter of fact, what else? As far as I'm concerned, Okay, so you, we also have to avoid that in our writing. But of course, in, in, in the spoken context, Iba, sometimes we benefit from all those phrases that we know because sometimes they could be used as filler words, especially for still thinking. And we don't know yet how to respond to a prior inquiry to us. Then we just say, as a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, Iba, you just try to collect all those words and it, they sound good in the spoken discourse but uh i think they have they have no place in the written discourse so it's just possible we try to avoid them okay what else you also have here at the present time we also have here uh because of the fact that okay then by means of you also have due to the fact that all these things what else what I mean to say is, okay, the point I'm trying to make, they are good in spoken discourse because they are, as I say, your filler words while you are still thinking and you don't know, you're still organizing your thoughts. What are the next things that you would want to say? But at the end, in the written discourse, it's not, um, it is, they have no place. Have here. We also have here. Meron pa ba tayo, Rev? Okay, so those are the things that you, in the event that, ayan, common sentence errors that we may have. Here are some examples. Ano yung mga yung natin? Uh, there are run on sentences, lacks of conciseness, error in word choice, misplaced modifier, faulty parallelism. Error in preposition usage, dangling modifier, lack of unity, and error in the pronoun antecedent. Uh, uh, I had the PowerPoint presentation. These verse that are actually real exempt, right? Eventually. Okay, so again, uh, thank you very much for attending this. Uh, mentoring session. I hope that this uh, helped you a lot in preparing your action research and narrative. Good afternoon po. Pasensya na po. I-send ko na lang po siguro yung copy po ng PowerPoint presentation ni Sir Joel sa mga different supervisors po. Dahil baka magkaroon na po ng power interruption mamayang 4.30. Pasensya na po. Ma'am Emily? 
Yeah, good afternoon again. Yeah, malapit na tayong mag brown out, nine minutes na lang. So, thank you, Dr. Joel, for that very comprehensive uh, discussion on uh, narrative report writing. So, we move on. Wala na tayong question and answer, no? Question sa narrative uh, report writing. Ma'am Emily, pwede oh, may mga tanong. Yes, Ma'am Rev. Mag-photo of home na tayo. Ay, yeah, oo, oo. Buti na lang naalala mo. Yes, please. Let's open our cameras para sa photo of natin. Thank you. Open na lang po ng camera. Bali, 8 page po to. 8 pages. Uh, wag pong yeah. mag-off ng camera ha, hanggang <laughs> hindi po natatapos. Naburo na yung lipstick natin lahat, ma'am Rep. <laughs> so, pasensya na po. Open po muna. Uh, first page po, pa-open po ng mga camera. Sir Jarel, Sir Genesis, Saniga. Pabulin po natin yung oras na 4.30 hanggat na dito po si ma'am Emily. Meron. Lahat ng San Jose, kami nila ma'am Myla mawawalan. <laughs> <laughs> Oo nga, pumawawalan po. So, first page po. Smile Ilang oras po yun, ma'am? Ilang oras daw yung wawala? 30 minutes. Next one po muna. Um, page one po, smile po. So, Jarel and Lorenzo pa on po. Page one, smile. One, two, three. Second page. Smile po. One, two, three. Third. Fourth. Open po nung camera. One, two, three. Fifth. Pa-open po ko nung camera. Leslie, Ramos, Esther, lahat po. Pa-open po kasi magsashapol pa rin po yun eh. Pa-open po. Huwag po muna kayong mag-close. Nag-iiba-iba rin kasi. One, two, three. Six. Seven. Ayaw niyo mag-open. Sige. Ma'am, okay na po. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. So, closing remarks na tayo, Dr. Myla. Yeah, maybe call in Dr. Myla Santos for her closing remarks. All right, to sum it up, what we have learned and what we have heard this afternoon, we only have to do four things. We plan, we act, we observe, we reflect in our classrooms. Whatever happens, dear interns, what we have to remember is that your experiences will be your legacy. So write them down, record them, and report through your action research and through your narrative report. Maraming salamat sa pag-attend. See you again and see you around. Be safe always. God bless us all. Salamat po. Thank you, po. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. You Stay safe. God bless. Thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po. Thank you, po. Sir Joseph, Pablo, are you still around? Thank you, po. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir Pablo, Sir Joseph, thank you. Congratulations po, Ma'am Emily, Ma'am Doc Myla, and Dr. Joel. Yay! Bakasyon na. Doc Lilia. Bakasyon na. Yeah, we have uh, three Lilia days. Na nag-travel pa sa Munoz. Oh, yeah. 
Congrats, ma'am. Congrats, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Sir Joseph, andyan pa ba siya? Sir Pablo? Ma'am, nandito po ako. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you po. Congrats thank you. po sa inyo. Thank you. Congrats, ma'am. Pahiram ulit next time. Sure, ma'am. No problem. Okay, God bless. Okay, bye-bye now. Brown out na dito sa amin. Recording.